Oh, today's the day. I've been waiting to show you this bathroom. Actually, two of my bathrooms. Now, I thought all this time that I told you about these rooms, but looking back, they never hit YouTube. This was before I had a YouTube channel, so they were only on the blog, and I realized that I need to catch you guys up to my two favorite rooms in my whole house. They are my bathrooms. And maybe that's because they were such a dramatic change, both of them, they were extreme makeovers. So let's go back in time just a little bit today and I'm going to show you where we came from, what we are dealing with now, and a couple things I will tweak in the future that I want your advice on. This one is the first one we tackled. This is the powder room downstairs. We called it the scary bathroom for a long time. I never took a shower in this bathroom for years. I think it was six years when we updated all the wiring in the house when we were first renovating we had to cut holes in the ceilings and the walls to wire everything right thread all the electrical so this room had huge holes cut out of the ceiling and i didn't even want to use the toilet because i had fears of looking up and seeing you know like an animal looking down at me and so i just this this room was just really useless i mean i had a sink but that was it so Wasted space, totally ugly, and disturbing. It took us an entire year to actually redo this room. And that's just an encouragement for you in case your remodel is taking a long time too. We squished our entire family up into the one bathroom upstairs and honestly it was fine. We just would have a line at the door sometimes, but it did work and I'm glad. And looking back, I would say it was the time, that extra long season of working on this space that really made it what it is, that it became just a work of art. Because I had the time to really think through things and get lots of samples in and really get every square inch exactly the way I wanted. So I appreciate that about doing jobs over long periods of time. They turn out better. Okay, I found the original checklist. And I wanted to read it to you because it's so encouraging to me how far we've come. It says, rebuild the window frame, re-plumb the shower and sink, rewire for sconces and ceiling fan, sheetrock, wallpaper, new wood flooring, crown molding, baseboard, corner trim. I don't know what that means. New toilet, new shower head, upcycle Craigslist dresser to create a sink vanity, find vintage door and glass knob, paint the shower door, find all the pretty details. There you have it, that's what we did. So there are two things in this room that I get a lot of questions about. One is this wallpaper that looks like beadboard, and two would be the wood floors. And we did wood floors upstairs as well. And honestly, if you seal this stuff real well, I haven't had a problem. I, have, I am not from the camp that says no wallpaper, no wood floors in bathrooms. Just seal them well and have good ventilation. And I think you're fine. I think one of my favorite things about this room is the East Lake dresser that we found on Craigslist. $250 and included the mirror that we have hanging over there. And I love it. East Lake furniture has a lot of detail and it's very uh, Queen Victoria style. It's late 1800s. It did come with a marble top and I took it to a marble cutter to get the sink hole cut out. We tried a bigger sink originally and ended up not liking that so we moved it upstairs. I'll show it to you upstairs in a moment. And then I found this tiny little one. I paid $30 for this little thing off of Craigslist and my husband pieced the whole thing together. Here's a picture of him trying to figure it out. I love that look on his face, by the way, because he's trying to figure out how to make all of my ideas come into reality. So that's one of my favorite looks on him. Then I also needed to come up with a backsplash. So I bought a modern piece of marble from the same marble cutter that cut the opening for the faucet and the sink. And I needed to decide if I wanted it honed or polished. Okay, this is a little, um, school moment for you. So 
Honed means that it's a matte finish and that is the more vintage look. If you are in this situation, you're gonna know which one to choose. You wanna get the honed style. So we did kind of an, an acid treatment to the backsplash that I bought and we made it matte. I did seal it. There's a like $15 sealer that you buy at Home Depot and you spray it on once a year and it seals it and I've had no issues. So I, I recommend that, very successful. That's my shower door back there. Just literally like the cheapest aluminum shower door that you could ever imagine is what it was. But I had a beautiful $800 dark um, metal door pinned on Pinterest. And I decided to just DIY it with some oil rubbed bronze. And then I did a little like, gold flecking on it, just a tiny, tiny bit. And that's it. Now it has worn off over time. And so that actually would be the number one thing I would change at this point in the bathroom is I would respray sections of the door, especially like where the handle, where everybody's like pulling it open and stuff. But, but it does work. I think it's a great solution for a very inexpensive shower door. My wall decorations are a little bit dated and I will be changing those out. Actually, I found some things when I was at Brimfield recently, so stay tuned. I will be sharing all the good stuff I got at Brimfield and you will see my updates in the bathroom here. But I did this whole like oversized ruler thing which was cute back in the day and now it just feels kind of dated. So I would change that out. This mirror over here is so cute. This is called a pub mirror. I guess because it has hooks underneath it, but each of us has our own towel, just one towel each, and they wash them all at once. And that has been a really good system for us to not get too carried away with too many towels. These towels I got at TJ Maxx, they're Vera Wang, and I paid $80 for five of them. That was years ago, and that's the only ones that we really use. Except for, I have some, oh, I do have some blue ones upstairs that we use um, for the pool that I'll show you when we go up there. There's the bamboo table, two bucks at a garage sale. That was awesome. And all the containers that I use actually in this bathroom were thrifted. Containers are the best for garage sales and thrift stores and things. And then I have those clocks over there, those three. I, I paid a dollar a piece for those. And I had them, originally they were all fixed at the same time. And then over, you know, a couple of years, the batteries died and I just left them. So they all say they're all stuck on a different time. And I feel like it's cute, like, you know, different time zones, London and New York. And so that's actually a really good solution for a skinny wall. If you need some wall decorations, do some clocks and don't even worry about the batteries. There's the doorknob that I love so much. I got that on eBay and the plates as well. This door was original to a house that's the same age as our house and I just happened to find it in a nearby city and it's pristine condition. So that was a really lucky find that was easy to install and we just updated the doorknob and I love it. Now, toilets. Don't overlook your toilet handle. I think that that brings a whole another um, pretty touch to a room that people often overlook just to get a pretty toilet handle. And then I am a stickler with how you present the toilet paper <laughs> in a vintage bathroom. So I have this shelf here and we just set the roll on there and that's how we roll around here so oh no pun intended <laughs> lastly we have this shelf that I got for free from my friends and oh you know what not lastly I forgot to tell you about these beautiful sconces these are from eBay I adore my sconces I think that might have been the first thing I found for this bathroom but this shelf we just have containers different baby cups, glass jars, baskets, and this gives us a little bit more storage. All right, let's head upstairs, and I will show you the second bathroom. So now we're in the upstairs bathroom. I love this bathroom. 
now, but it was really, really, really bad when we moved in. In fact, the only redeeming property was probably the door, which I kept, and it has a window on it that's a frosted glass. I love that, and I love the transom above the door. Other than that, the, all the charm stopped at the threshold. So when you first came in, somebody DIY'd this piece of junk cabinet with some old plywood and then they just tried to paint it white and and that was supposedly better. They did this triangle shape plywood thing right here. And then there was the built-in surround, you know, for the shower and the tub. But that was peeling off the wall. It was cracked. It was mildewing. The faucet had broken off. So the only way to get water was to take pliers and turn the water on. So we kept a pair of pliers next to the faucet, which then were like rusting on the side of the tub. <sighs> there was no fan, no fan. So water would just drip down the walls when you would take a shower. Apparently they thought that the transom would do the job. And so I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. Then we get to the floor. It was some okay looking vinyl, but apparently it had bubbled. And so the previous owner didn't like that. So he took nails, big nails, and hammered down all the bubbles. Mm -hmm. Not a long term thinker here. And of course those rusted out. Now we have full on holes going through the vinyl floor into the subfloor, which got water in it. The subfloor rotted. So as you walk through the room, it's kind of spongy feeling. <laughs> and I had these visions of being, you know, like cat and hat where you're sitting in the tub and all of a sudden it just falls through the floor and I land in the fireside room below. Those were real fears I had in this room. Then we had some cheap rubber plasticky baseboards to save on the budget there. The vanity looked like it was free off the side of the road, probably was and the faucet was too large and so they had to install it backwards so the hot was cold and the cold was hot and you couldn't use the little stopper because the faucet was going over the top of that okay so that's what I was dealing with when we got here I did immediately after we moved in scrub every square inch of the bathroom with bleach water and it felt a tiny bit better but it didn't look any better. And we lived like that for four years. So if you are in this boat where you have a bathroom that just makes your skin crawl, it makes you wanna cry, um, it happens to a lot of us, you're not alone, and it doesn't mean it's not gonna get better. So first thing we did was, of course, we had to rebuild the floor. So all the way down to the floor joists, I even think we might've put some new floor joists in, and new subfloor, beautiful wood floor. And people ask me often, are wood floors bad in bathrooms? I have not had any problems with them. And it's all about sealing them very well. So I say go for it if that's what you want to do. But we did a faux board and batten look and got a free cast iron tub. So our friend used to have us over to their house and in the kids' playroom was this cast iron tub and they filled it with pillows for a reading nook. And then when they found out that we got this house, they said, you can have the tub. So the day that that tub was brought upstairs, I loved my husband on a whole nother level because that was tough. Cast iron tubs are really, really heavy. He actually refinished it before we moved it upstairs. And there are kits for that. So you can sand down a cast iron tub and use products to make it all beautiful white porcelain. So we brought that up and it was already looking so much better. Then we thought that we wanted to do showers up here. It's the only bathroom upstairs. In hindsight, I would I would have just skipped that thought. I, it's just, it's a good tub is what it is. And the shower is what we use downstairs. But at the time, we were really wanting to make this work. So I, I found that these curtain rods that go around a cast iron tub are really cheap and so we actually never did find one that we liked so we had to DIY it. We took copper pipes, my husband had to bend them carefully. I don't know how he did all this. 
soldered it, painted it, installed it. I made a curtain out of a duvet that I thrifted. And oh, we also put in a decent fan that actually ventilated out the side of the house. We did all electrical for new lighting, plugs all over, you know, for curling irons and things. So really at a good spot for the shell. Then if you have a cast iron tub, you're going to want some type of storage. And here's the two things I like. So I got these hooks from World Market. Oh, these towels as well are from World Market. But you want access to your towels and then of course like shampoos and things. And so we have a hanging basket for that. That's been a really good solution. The other thing I really like is a, what they call a tub butler. So just a little tray. We just took a few boards, just super simple setup. And that goes across the tub. Now, the faucet. I had this faucet pinned on Pinterest that was a thousand dollars. Just really gorgeous bohemian looking faucet with a shower head and the handle piece and then the, the regular faucet. But I didn't want to spend that so I found one that was really similar on eBay and it arrived. All it looked like someone ran over it with a truck. I probably should have got my money back on that thing. But it had Chinese writing all over it. There were pieces missing. My husband literally had to redesign it and go to Home Depot about three times to make this thing work. So I get questions about it and it is beautiful. I don't know what you're gonna get. I am gonna link you a similar one if you're interested in it, but oh gosh, I'm just, you've been warned. Fair warning here. I love that sweet chandelier. We got that at Home Depot. I think what I want to do though is add some sconces. I really think that that would look good in this space. Then the last thing I did was dress up the door a little bit, which I still, I really did like the door, but I put this real cute sign. It says Toile on it, and I will link that for you. A lot of people really like that sign. It's cast iron, got it on Amazon, and then I got beautiful doorknob and plates off of eBay. So that was all the door really needed. So all of the wall decorations are thrifted and I get comments about having plates on the wall in the bathroom which uh, the more I think about it the more I'm thinking I might take those down. I actually would love to probably wallpaper in this bathroom soon so you guys can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But that brings me to the vanity. So this vanity I searched high and low for, I think I went through about 3,000 vanities on Craigslist and chose this one. And I had my husband pick it up and it was sight unseen. So when he brought it home, my first thought was, it's a little bit orange. And so that was several years ago and I still look at it and I still think, it's a little bit orange. So that is something that I may be doing next as well is painting it. I have to leave the top the color because we put this this clear epoxy on it to seal it so that I can't change the color of but everything below I think might turn a new color. My wheels are turning. The sink is the one you saw downstairs that we originally tried to use down there and then decided we need something smaller so we took brought it up here. The faucet I still think is available so I will link that for you. And I also get a lot of questions about, do I like dressers turned vanity for, in bathrooms? And I do, I really, really do. The only thing I will say is that you have to actually cut out the drawers and rebuild them so that they can slide in and make room for all the pipes in there. And that makes for some awkward storage spaces and sometimes the drawers kind of <clears throat> kind of like fall open on you and that's annoying. But other than that, I highly recommend it. Even having lived with it this way for several years, I still would do it all the same again if I found a dresser I really liked. So this is a piece that I'm really excited about. This is a curio that my grandmother gave to me. She filled it with dolls and I kept it for many years and ended up painting it white. And then it has this, it has this light in here that is really beautiful. I like it when I'm just soaking in the tub to have that light on. And then this is one of my favorite things to do in a bathroom is to get a piece like this with the glass doors. And then you just want to get different really pretty 
storage pieces and containers and that's your beautiful storage area to extend the square footage of storage. So the mirror, I forget the exact number, but I believe I went through 17 mirrors or something ridiculous and embarrassing. And sometimes it just goes that way and you never know what's going to be the problem child in your project. So I went through many, many, many mirrors antique ones, one of them even fell off the wall in the middle of the night, broke all over. I just really struggled, but I settled on this one. I saw a similar one in a bathroom that Jenna Sue Designs had completed and I loved it. And so this one I settled on, but it still came in, it was silver. So I did a gold and oil rub bronze spray paint and got it to look like the antique bronze that I have in the faucets. We did it, but that mirror aged me. All right, we did it. I showed you the two extreme bathroom makeovers that I pulled off in this house. It was fun because the kids were even looking at it and going, oh my gosh, this was so horrible. Oh my gosh, we've come so far. So try to track down your before pictures sometimes if you need a little boost of encouragement to show you how far you have come. and. That's always, always amazing. Like you just forget. Okay, two things before I let you go. Number one, I wanna start doing local home tours in Washington State. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can fill out an application so I can see pictures and kind of hear um, why you love the house. It doesn't have to be yours, it can be someone you know, like you can nominate someone. And I wanna start doing more of those things um, and sharing those with my viewers. So it takes like five hours for me to go in with my team and shoot the whole house and we can all enjoy these secret little beautiful places around my state. So that is number one. Number two, be sure to grab a copy of your 12 vintage art prints. If you haven't, I've curated a little collection of them that you can get free at 12vintageartprints.com and when you check out with those you will get an option to take a master class that I have on how I solve wall decorating solutions so different scenarios that you'll run into and how I how I handle those things so all right see you next week take care